So Cell and XOR was approved in the U.S. Of now three years ago and is an inhibitor of XPO1 or exportin one which is a nuclear export protein that shuttles various cargoes out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm, including a variety of tumor suppressor proteins and some oncogene mRNAs. And so by moving those out of the nucleus, XPO1 contributes to cancer cell survival and chemotherapy resistance. And so the idea is that by blocking that ability to shuttle these cargoes out of the nucleus, we could promote cancer cell death and inhibit cancer cell proliferation. And in in early clinical trials, um, which I had the honor to be a part of, Cell and XR clearly led to good, effective myeloma responses. Um, And although it has a fair number of toxicities that can make it challenging to use in clinical practice, ultimately many patients could stay on therapy for meaningful amounts of time. This was later proven in a randomized phase three trial called the Boston trial that compared selenexor with bortezomib and dexamethasone to bortezomib and dexamethasone alone, which clearly showed that not only did you get better response rates with the addition of selenexor, you also got better progression-free survival, which meant that patients were able to truly benefit from the selenexor or stay on therapy long enough to get that benefit and ultimately have their myeloma stay under control longer. So I think that Selenexor has a clear role in multiple myeloma therapy, and I use it regularly for my patients. The challenging part is the toxicity profile. Selenexor causes a lot of fatigue, a lot of gastrointestinal symptoms, and a fair amount of cytopenias, particularly thrombocytopenia. So that when I try to think about where to use Selenexor in the treatment of multiple myeloma, it does usually come later on in therapy. And after I've used other effective myeloma agents and when my patients have relatively few other options. But I found that in that situation, for some patients, Selenexor leads to really nice clinical responses. Some patients can stay on treatment for a long period of time. And when their myeloma eventually progresses, they're usually in a better place to move on to other therapies, including clinical trials. And these days, although Selenexor is approved primarily in combination with bortezomib and dexamethasone or as a single agent, just in combination with dexamethasone. Um, I think we now typically use Selenexor in a variety of clinical combinations, uh, depending on the individual circumstances of the patient. So combining Selenexor with bortezomib or carfilzomib um, can yield really good responses, as can combinations with pomalidomide, and in particular, the combination with daratumumab. Um, And all of these have been reported in phase two trials as both effective and safe combinations. The daratumumab combination is particularly well tolerated and you can see really nice responses. So I typically do include Selenexor as an option for all of my patients. And I think it's worth keeping in mind, especially for patients who don't have any other good treatment options.